600 Watt RMS Stereo Amplifier. Home cinema and active speaker systems need powerful amplifiers to drive subwoofer. Theoretically, you can purchase good professional 2U rack amplifier for about 350 or uh, 450 euros for such project. The drawback of professional solutions is the weight, size and noise of such units. How much power do you need? The simple answer is that the 500 watt stereo amplifier is a sweet point of power price, size and noise factors. Why not make it 1U or 45 cm high? The key problem is with heat dispatch. You should use 40 mm fans and those are high RPM solutions. Therefore, those are noisy. With 80 mm fan from a good manufacturer, you can build an excellent silent small footprint system. Let's briefly look to sound pressure level, SPL, and power relationship. SPL reflects loudness, what we are hearing. I have detailed explanation of this topic in my previous video, where covered theoretical basics of small size subwoofers. If you play loud, then you need more amplifier power than someone who plays music much quieter. Acoustic studies have found that approximately 10 dB SPL increase is perceived as twice as loud by our ears. Room size matters, because a large room requires more sound to fill it. As described previously, regardless of the speakers, SPL drops by 6 dB every time of the distance of the speakers doubles. For every doubling of amplifier power, a speaker can produce 3 dB more SPL. And what conclusions can we make? Here's a graph showing increase of amplifier power ratio. And you can see, let's take example of 10 watts amplifier power. It's here. If you want to double loudness, that means 10 decibels, you remember, those 10 SPL increase. 10 decibel SPL increase is perceived as twice as loud by our ears. So 10 plus 10, it's 20, and what we see, it's 100 watts. That means to double loudness, subjective listening loudness, we need a 10 times amplifier power. And this is a simple answer why you need an amplifier power at all. You have a headroom and a 500 watt amplifier is safe for all your listening. And this is very important drawing answering a question why you need a lot of power. Because there is logarithmic relationship between sound pressure level or sound loudness and amplifier power. If you look another chart, uh, equal loudness curves, uh, studio recordings are done uh, about uh, 80, 80 decibels. Here, where our air sensitive is very high, uh, we are using fraction of watts or uh, just a few watts uh, listening our music. And let's look at, uh, okay, about uh, 40 hertz. 80 decibels, 40 hertz. We are already at uh, 100 decibel SPL. That means we need plus 20 decibels to normal listening at, uh, at a frequency range somewhere about 1 kilohertz, where our ears are very sensitive. And 10 decibels, it's 10 times. 20 decibels, it's 100 times more. If you are listening at 1 watt, then we need 100 watts for the low frequencies to hear it at the same, same loudness. So this is why I need power. Why you need power? Uh, and with the distance, it drops by 6 decibels. For, it, for example, if you're listening at uh, 1 meter distance, there is a 1 scenario. When you're listening at 3 meter distance, it's a completely different scenario and different power needed. What is better choice? Go for passive or active cooling? Active cooling is by far better because you can adapt a cooling system for horizontal, front-to-back airflow and stack equipment. And can use them in hot countries as well. Using a branded 80 mm fan, you can make a system inaudible at 10 cm distance from amplifier. Why not use such famous brands as Hypex and Ice Power? Yes, you can use them, and those will be excellent systems. But those are coming with almost double the costs. For subwoofer and three way system woofer amplifier scenarios, you are using narrow bandwidth like 20 Hz to 500 Hz. The main requirements for you is power, reliability and reasonable price. The optimum price range for uh, 2 times 500 watt solution for the finished amplifier is about uh, 350 euros. For Hypex and Ice Power similar solutions cost will be double. The benefit of branded solution 
you will have an excellent power amplifier for stereo music reproduction as well. Driving just subwoofer, branded solutions will be a bit overkill. Also, when we are talking about the power amplifier, we should understand that there are two powers what we have for an amplifier. They have uh, average power here, typically about a couple of watts or even below the watt when we when we're listening, and then we have a kicks and peaks, and those peaks are far more larger than average or RMS power and uh, it is called as a crest factor. Crest factor is a ratio between uh, power peaks and RMS. So the largest here, the peak power and RMS is somewhere here. And uh, uh, you can see that different music and different music materials has different uh, uh, those crest factors or power ratios and the movie is one of what demands really uh, high uh, crest factor it could be even uh, higher than 10 and uh, typical normal uh, music from 60s 70s 80s has a crest factor of uh, of, of 10. now if you don't have a sufficient uh, power reserve that music will sound flat but if you have it then it will sound dynamic and then i took one example uh, how engineers think about a good uh, power amplifier power supply Typically, they define the input uh, input voltage from the mains. Uh, for worldwide, you need uh, 110 and 220 volts. Uh, output 36 volts, uh, about 5 amps, 200 watts. Uh, they built with a two-stage to provide that uh, requirements. You need good transit response, and uh, it, they should uh, have good efficiency at uh, light load, one watt to ten watts, typically at music listening. What they are those RMS RMS powers? But look at the requirements. What they set continuous power. This power supply should deliver about hundred watts, up to one hour. So a bit overheating, two hundred watts peak 400 watts and short term peak about 10 microseconds before it kicks to protection 800 watts so for 10 watt typical music listening we are building 100 watt rms power supply with 800 watt peak power to give this 8 to 1 ratio this is good power supply and then your amplifier will shine if you built it in this way but look at it 10 music typical listening and 800 watt peak power you need a power and how that solutions uh, look like this is famous board uh, tpa 3255 and look at the complexity of power supply for that you can find those boards for a very small price, uh, I would say between 20 and uh, 50 euros. But power supply, such kind of power supply price will be hard to say, but uh, 80, 100 euros maybe in volumes. The biggest challenge for good amplifier is power supply. It's here that power supply quality really uh, defines quality of amplifier. For that reason, we found an excellent professional board and introduced a new product, subwoofer amplifier, with a price of 325 euros plus shipping flat rate of 25 euros by FedEx worldwide. Keeping the final cost of the product in frame of 350 euros for a good 500 watt RMS stereo amplifier. Let's take a closer look at the chosen board. It's China manufactured professional board using branded electronic components. You may find this board in several professional amplifiers in a power range from 400 watts to 1 kilowatt per channel. It is the same board with a different power supply rail voltages using the same components. So, uh, let's look to chosen board. It took a while until we find the right one and uh, from almost 20 boards what we were looking for that amplifier we choose this one. This is absolutely professional board it meant for professional applications and the key features is uh, it really can work at rms and uh, second one it is very reliable extremely re reliable and let's look uh, let's take a closer look what we have on board so here's the main input 
those two blade connectors are in parallel. Here is a line, here is a neutral. Uh, it has fuse on board. Uh, it also has a large NTC a resistor for uh, English current limitation. If you check size of that transformer, it's kind of 4 kilowatt capable transformer. Uh, when we tested the board uh, for 600 watt, uh, at least power supply is running cool and uh, and uh, there is a reason for that. I think uh, those uh, components are standardized and there is a version uh, with a more than 1 kilowatt per channel, uh, the same architecture, uh, just having a little bit uh, now more input uh, capacitor capacity but for this uh, 600 uh, watt per channel amplifier board you can see that uh, 680 microfarad capacitors those are good quality capacitors for 200 volts and uh, they set in special configuration uh, with a jumper configure it for 110 countries uh, or for uh, 220 volt countries and by default it comes with a uh, 220 volt countries two relatively large heat sinks and that power supply part is running almost cold and uh, the amplifier part is running uh, with a temp temperature between uh, 50 and 60 degrees it's normal temperature and you can easily cool it if you look at the general configuration how it is built let's start with the power supply and you can see uh, here is a chip let's look uh, what chip is it so it is uh, international rectifier IR2153 and uh, you will find that this architecture, this power supply architecture is used in many professional amplifiers. Here is simplified uh, schematics of that power supply, the same, there is a plug, there is some uh, inish current limiter, there is filter and then uh, rectifier bridge and two capacitors. It's uh, pretty close what we saw. Um, this is simplified schematics but in practice it's, uh, there are more uh, circuits especially for a protection and uh, uh, for other automations and temperature sensing but uh, anyway this is a basic principle that you have this chipset. It's self-oscillating special uh, chipset what is driving two uh, MOSFETs uh, those are powerful, uh, reliable MOSFETs and then you have a transformer with uh, proper windings and then you get uh, about uh, 72 volts out. I think uh, this uh, schema reflects more or less what, what we saw. Also there is additional filtering uh, inductivities but uh, it's not a must. Uh, you can live without them. And you have a perfect power supply. What is it good with that? There is no feedback so you should calculate it properly and uh, also output uh, voltage um, depends on uh, uh, on the mains, mains input uh, so you should have a more or less stable mains input but there is a protection if you have an over voltage uh, it will it will go it will switch off that uh, power supply or an under voltage will do the same so there are certain limitations uh, in which uh, input uh, uh, voltage you can work. Uh, typically somewhere from uh, 200 volts to 250 volts uh, input voltage is fine. There are uh, several modifications of that. You can uh, get out uh, several additional inputs if you need it. Uh, everything depends on how you built uh, your uh, secondary windings and you can get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, stuff out is it's relatively easy to calculate and uh, and it's common common uh, circuits what you have for uh, powerful amplifiers there is another one with a with a current sensing circuits those are here and uh, sometimes when you want to understand uh, uh, at least uh, some kind of uh, category of, of component there is a working uh, schematics uh, where all components are given and you can you can look and test uh, those components so everything what you saw in that uh, uh, schematics you can see here in a current limiter input filter uh, input bridge two capacitors international rectifier driver uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, components around it, uh, some transistors. All of them are built for 
for protection and, uh, and uh, other stuff to make this board work reliable. We try, we try to work at the maximum power, no problem. Uh, you can get, uh, in RMS, you can get uh, 500 watts per channel and then power supply triggers to switch off. For one channel you can get uh, uh, 550 watts RMS and peak power you can get uh, far, far more. Let's check those power supply MOSFETs, uh, who is manufacturer. It's an ADL manufacturer. I'm not sure, but but seems it's uh, it's proven manufacturer. And what we have is 20N50C. Uh, let's look at specifications of those MOSFETs. H here you can see uh, those MOSFETs. Uh, this is um, another manufacturer, UTC. And also, what is important, when you build something for professional applications, you need several manufacturers in the world that you have a risk management, uh, that those components will be in the market at any circumstances. Maybe there's earthquake in, uh, in uh, one region where those uh, components are manufactured, or there is some political issues, then you have another supply options uh, that you have interrupted production of professional units because you are producing them in a large quantities. And uh, those are very good reliable MOSFETs. And uh, uh, you can see the drain source voltage is 500 volts and uh, we are using only 320 in a, in a worst case scenario. Uh, they are capable of continuous 20 amps, but uh, our, our case is pulsed, it's 80 80 amps, it's 4 kilowatt capable, and we are using only for uh, for for one uh, no, two times 500 watt uh, amplifier. It's one kilowatt. There's a lot of headroom, and this headroom means you have a lot of reliability. Also, uh, you can build uh, different uh, power amplifiers using the same components. It's standardization, and it reduces costs. So. But generally, they're using reliable, proven manufactured components. And nevertheless, this board has been uh, developed in and produced in China. They use reliable, really standardized, uh, good manufactured components on it. How about power amplifier side? Uh, let's check components, what, what are there. Okay, let's look what we have. And we have proven manufactured international rectifier. Uh, it's uh, probably absolutely one of the best manufacturer of uh, specialized MOSFETs for class D amplifiers and they use specialized MOSFETs. Uh, probably this is one of the reasons why total harmonic distortions are low. Uh, those are about uh, 0.05% uh, uh, and what we have, we have IRFP 260N and let's check uh, parameters. Here is International Rectifier Datasheet. Um, here is our MOSFET, high power MOSFET. What, how about uh, maximum parameters? They can use uh, very high continuous current, about 50 amps, but pulse it uh, current could be 200 amps. You have huge, huge additional uh, headroom working on it. It's very reliable. Power dissipation, 300 watts, if you properly use it. It's a lot. Uh, for 500 watt uh, amplifier, probably you have, I don't know, few watts. They have pretty high efficiency. Probably you dissipate about 10 watts for, for all, uh, all components, what is there. But still, 10 watts is, uh, you, sh you need a cool or you need a large heat sink. Okay, it's a small heat sink, you need active cooling. Uh, what else is worth mentioning? Uh, okay, uh, operating junction and storage temperature range. Pay attention to this uh, minus 55, okay, it's a storage one, but operating up to 175 degrees Celsius. Typically operates in uh, power range of the heat sink between 40 and uh, 50 degrees. Okay, junction temperature may be 10, 20, 
degrees Celsius more, up to 70 degrees. It has very comfortable operation because it can withstand 175 degrees. It's operating. Probably it uh, has it can withstand more. Actually, I'm surprised because typical silicon uh, uh, silicon type of MOSFETs uh, junction maximum uh, temperature is 125. Here is at 50 degrees more. It's very reliable uh, solution, even that uh, at uh, high temperature conditions. Also, let's check uh, what kind of uh, uh, class D modulator they has. This board has here. It is. It's not easy to see, but it's because a YD7120. I never heard it, heard about it. Uh, let's check in the uh, internet what it is. Bingo! What we found? We found that it is uh, IRS 2092S uh, chipset manufactured by uh, by Chinese manufacturer. Mm, as I mentioned in some previous videos, uh, China is very good. Uh, so medium. Uh, size integration chipset manufacturer and this is exactly medium size chipset so we have a, another manufacturer manufacturing IRS 2092S and I didn't find any complaints about it because everything uh, worked worked fine uh, yes uh, you may think that maybe IRS 2092S from International Rectifier is a better but I don't see the difference and I never had a problems uh, with uh, that, that chipset uh, for this amplifier board, so I would uh, say that it's a good component. And if you check that amplifier architecture is pretty similar to this uh, Iround Amp 7S uh, reference design architecture, with some additional protection circuits and uh, and uh, volume regulation circuit. There's some preamplifier part uh, more advanced, but that power amplifier is pretty similar to this Iround Amp 7S ar architecture. And uh, what we can see, those are uh, typical features of this uh, architecture. They use uh, also international rectifier components for that. Uh, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, specifications. Uh, here we have uh, several, uh, uh, several options. And I think this is kind of advanced version of this AMP 7S uh, 200 using uh, very powerful MOSFETs. And for uh, for a four ohms, uh, they definitely can uh, the early is of 600 per channel. Uh, for with those uh, MOSFETs, what is in reference design, you can't uh, go for a four ohm load. But uh, this board is built that you can go for a four ohm load with a confidence. And basically, output stage is similar to this uh, international rectifier reference design. It's you will find a lot of similarities here. The input circuits are uh, far more advanced because they have some preamplifier circuits. There are some uh, soft clipping circuit circuits on it, but generally speaking, it's uh, kind of one channel is kind of here. You can find the familiar components like 22 microhenry uh, inductors. You can find that there are two large MOSFETs. Uh, yeah pretty pretty close and also you will find that uh, um, IRS uh, 2092 is uh, modulator clone. Uh, let's take a look a little bit more uh, to this preamplifier part and uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, small chipsets. Those are two channel uh, operational amplifiers. Uh, this board has advanced feature. They have soft clipping circuits and they have very good soft clipping circuits uh, practically you are limited uh, to go not above uh, 550 watts output power and this is uh, total harmonic distortions will be below 1% uh, even theoretically it could go uh, above your input uh, input circuits are limiting that and it's a very good feature you never can overdrive that means there is no distortions on a speaker and your speakers are protected even you can blast as a hell it's never go to distorted level if he's not in a distorted level then your uh, speakers are safe for, for short term speakers can handle huge power uh, there are some two additional or relay circuits, I don't know what they do, but maybe uh, if there is some total disaster, then they protect uh, something. 
And uh, one more thing, your speakers are protected, the delay circuits as well. Uh, there is uh, at uh, output uh, you have uh, relay circuits uh, that protect your speaker. If problem happens, serious problem happens, then those circuits are uh, protecting your uh, precious speakers. A very reliable and professional built uh, build solution. Also, let's check uh, what kind of operational amplifiers they use for uh, input circuits. Uh, the first uh, chip that you use in preamplifier is a uh, uh, relatively famous uh, audio op-amp. Uh, it's uh, 072. Uh, there are two op-amps in that uh, one uh, socket. Uh, it's original Texas Instruments uh, produced uh, chipsets and uh, they have some uh, uh, specifics, they are very low current consumption and uh, high input impedance. It's very good as a input buffer amplifier and they choose a good one. Another chip used in that uh, solution is uh, NE5532, a famous uh, audio operational amplifier. You will find it in many audio devices. Mm, it is especially developed for audio applications. It has a low noise solution and uh, uh, they have a high current at uh, output. Uh, it's perfect as a buffer amplifier or output amplifier. You can drive or build the circuits with uh, 30, 60 ohms output impedance and it's a perfect choice for that particular solution to drive the gate driver. Great solution, everything built by the book. What else is worth mentioning? Ah, now also it has, uh, this board has uh, uh, a volume level control and some protection indicators. So, here is a board and uh, you have uh, input uh, level regulation from uh, minus infinity up to, si from silence to plus 32 decibels. Uh, it's a lot. Practically, you can uh, adjust it for any combination with active crossover. Not all uh, active crossovers has a large uh, regulation uh, range, uh, typically minus 6 dB to plus 6 dB. And we had uh, cases when it's not sufficient, uh, especially when you're using powerful subwoofer amplifiers. This is how you can balance your system. Uh, for a subwoofer. Typically there is no problem balancing uh, mid-range and tweeter, but uh, the biggest challenge is balancing uh, subwoofer uh, and uh, mid-range. Uh, sometimes you have high sensitivity subwoofers and you need a more attenuation. This is solving that problem perfectly. And you can see that uh, uh, there is a LED indicating there is a power, there is a signal, there is a clipping, and there's protection. So when you switch it on, that protection lets will kick uh, and when everything is fine, those will uh, go dark and uh, relay contacts will, 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 will close. Overall, perfect board for a subwoofer and a woofer amplifier. Even more than perfect, I would say. We assembled it uh, in uh, a uh, universal case, a uh, very good al high, uh, light uh, aluminium case. And uh, let's look how the final uh, solution looks like. For, uh, for my opinion, it's a more than perfect board for active speaker systems uh, to drive a woofer. Because you have a sweet point between uh, price, power, reliability, affordability, final uh, amplifier size, uh, weight, cooling solution for many, many uh, small things, uh, they fit perfectly. Yeah, this is a perfect solution. Now let's look to the uh, assembled, assembled unit. So, so this is uh, ampli amplified front view. The longest dimension is 300 uh, millimeters or 30 centimeters. Here you can see uh, that uh, regulation knobs and uh, information about uh, the LEDs main switch. It has balanced inputs. Uh, you can also use it in, in balanced uh, uh, way uh, using adapter cable or uh, adapter or some kind of adapter. Uh, it's very easy to find and uh, they cost nothing. 
but in that case you have always uh, one uh, side connected it's very good connector the TXLR connectors are very good comparing to RCA uh, there's a parallel professional connector speak on connector and uh, consumer connectors there is no universal mains it's uh, 220 or 100 uh, 10 volts and you should specify before you buy mm, normally we are uh, selling currently 220 volts version but if you really want it we can deliver some 110 volts versions as well fun operation is uh, almost silent from 10 centimeters you will not hear it uh, but it's very good that fun is operates there's many complain that uh, it's taking some dust in it but with a home type operation okay maybe once in three years you need to clean it but uh, typically there's no problem with that but yeah formally saying uh, there should be some need for dust cleanup in in five years operation but it's not a big prom problem comparing thought uh, that reliability what this fund is giving here is inside look uh, everything is uh, set uh, properly fun is operating against uh, those uh, heat sinks uh, there's sufficient airflow there's the regulations not much to say it's a very small size uh, I would say very small size for this power amplifier you can place it vertically you can place it horizontally when there is active cooling doesn't matter how you place it uh, just don't uh, cover that tire flow uh, uh, cutouts and everything will be fine very lightweight this is how board fits in that enclosure and I would say it's it perfectly it's relatively tight design but you have uh, sufficient space for uh, additional components in the same time uh, it fits perfectly in that in that board somehow optimized solution and uh, also you can see this dimension is 200 millimeters and uh, this board is uh, perfect for that uh, size of uh, of amplifier could you make it smaller no you can't practically you can't make it smaller but uh, this is optimized design it's also easy to ship we are shipping without uh, power cord because power cord uh, has some weight and then you should pay additional 10 10 euros for a shipping but uh, you can buy for a fraction of price or you can have it in stock it's standard uh, desktop PC computer power cord what we need and also there are several regions in the world uh, each region has a different socket type we are not providing sockets when we are selling the device we try to keep a price low and then don't charge for for necessary things especially for extra shipment um, what products we have based on this uh, amplifier as a base uh, there is complete set of uh, three-way active speaker system that you have this powerful two times 500 watt uh, amplifier for a for a woofer that is a very good uh, uh, very good uh, three-way active crossover uh, there's always a good question should you use a DSP type crossover for your active system so it's it's fine with an analog crossover uh, we did several tests and I should say that um, I find out that uh, simple active crossover with uh, 24 decibel per octave of, uh, filters is the best one and it's also cost effective but you should buy a good uh, good solution and we choose one what is a uh, very good I think some modification of this uh, design has been used for for DBX uh, and sold for almost 200 uh, euros uh, but uh, this has the same uh, parameters the same architecture it's very very good and uh, there are ice power 200 ace 2 boards uh, two pieces uh, in, a, in a kit so those are assembled kits so this uh, particular solution allow you to go out of box and uh, and, and drive three uh, three-way systems and you can drive practically any system here you have 150 watts per per channel on four ohms and it, here you have uh, 500 watt uh, power per channel uh, for for woofers so here is a mid-range and tweeter mid-range and tweeter
this is how, how it looks. You can see a lot of uh, connectors you need and uh, you can use uh, so-called uh, XLR patch cables. You can buy them in a volumes. I think they are uh, 8 in a set for below 20, uh, 20 euros. Uh, if necessary, we can provide them as well. And then you can connect uh, everything, everything together. Uh, it's perfect system. In my opinion, it takes uh, low space. You can uh, also place them uh, in a line. Then it takes more space in a line and uh, less space in, in a vertical. It's modular. Each of uh, the units could be used as separate units. Sometimes you need to just uh, drive uh, some some party. You can use uh, this. Uh, uh, woofer amplifier for that uh, when you play loud the quality is not important anymore when you want the quality yes put put a system together you can check prices in my web shop www.tcrasters.com the website link is below in description good compact nice uh, system it's end-to-end -end complete system and you can run your three-way speaker system uh, uh, out of the box uh, what is also good with active speaker system is that uh, when you have passive system, it should be tuned and it is tuned for one meter uh, listening distance in an anachronic chamber. Uh, when you have active speaker systems, uh, you can tune it at your listening position. Tuning at listening distance is a better because then you tune exactly where you, where you, where you listen and it's very easy just uh, to balance with a few potentiometers. Uh, it's a big advantage of uh, active systems. Also, I'm not talking about uh, how precisely active system can drive uh, your speakers. Even uh, mid-range uh, speakers will start to show up uh, with a very good and precise sound. It's professional product. It's produced in large volumes and branded with a different logos and sold with a different prices. We got a good price and included uh, for, for really moderate price in, in, in a set. Also, we made um, another set uh, where combined uh, amplifier with a crossover. Uh, those for those customers who already has uh, AB class uh, power amplifiers from the past, and then you can combine, uh, make an active system when this uh, uh, large power is done by this uh, amplifier. TCR 1000 uh, S uh, crossover we give almost for free <laughs> in that combination so uh, you can start with that and then take uh, afterwards take a de decision uh, if you want to go for a digital one then you can compare it but uh, as I said uh, we did a lot of tests and for a home user for a music listening in in controlled environment uh, that analog uh, uh, crossover is absolutely perfect. This is how does it look. Also, it's uh, pr for a price, is check my website and uh, you will find it out. A uh, little bit about the crossover. I already said some couple of good words, but it is really high tech uh, developed. It has an uh, analog. Uh, a conventional transformer, small power, about 15 watts, it's, it's very small, but uh, it gives a good insulation, there's a little chance that you will have a, a ground loop, it's properly based, because it's also work as a ground loop insulation. Uh, everything is uh, SMD, and it's uh, developed in a way that you have a minimum human effort to assemble it. You just uh, put inside that an enclosure, screw several screws, and then put the front, and you are done. Uh, I checked uh, all components. Those are proven manufacturers, top of the top uh, components. Uh, modern ones, uh, even the output drivers are better than in any 5532. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a a later generation audio chipsets with the, the same capabilities uh, original texas instruments components very very good board and uh, yeah it's a very good uh, three-way crossover and um, maybe you can see but uh, even even connectors are golden plated or uh, it's uh, okay it's virtual gold and plated, but specially plated connectors for a long lasting. Uh, 
and you can configure it in it as a two-way speaker, three-way speaker, or cho or four-way speaker. Four-way speaker, it's uh, only only one channel, but three-way and two-way, uh, there's stereo possibilities. So if you have a four-way speaker system, you need two of them. And of course, you can buy just an amplifier itself. It's also available in amplifier uh, in amplifier chapter, especially for home cinema. If you want to run your uh, your woofer properly, it is a great addition. Uh, for a modern uh, modern home cinema system, you have two woofers. Either you buy them, of course, end to end from uh, from good manufacturer, or you build it by yourself, or use some. X uh, woofer anyway this is a good addition and modern uh, home cinema DSP systems are capable to filter right frequencies for those subwoofers also do the uh, subwoofer uh, response characteristic corrections you can do a lot of stuff with that and then, and then with a high power amplifier you can run it uh, as a hell so that's it about uh, that uh, new product, what we introduced. Uh, um, let's make a summary of that. It's for reliability. It's for a woofer and subwoofer. It's perfect for high-end audio running uh, a woofer. It's not super perfect for high-end uh, audio amplifier when you're running at a full band. Then you should go for... Uh, ice power or for uh, hypex and that will be the double price solution uh, you should make the right choices if you want to both high-end uh, high-end audio and subwoofer case by case then uh, go for ice power solution we have a kit for that if you have uh, active speaker systems this is a perfect addition